Hello and welcome to a new edition of Bengal Magazine. My name is Jeff Ventura, sitting in for Tom Kohler this week on today's show. We're going to start with women's hockey and head coach Candice Moxley. She's bringing along senior forward from Buffalo, New York, Nikki Kurtzberger. Then we're going to shift our attention to track and field and the successes of our track and field athletes. Head coach Eugene Lewis will first bring Benjamin Aziki, a national champion triple jumper, a senior from Staten Island, New York. And then Coach Lewis will stick around and we'll talk with Jaslyn Porter, an All-American long jumper, also a senior from Niagara Falls. Stay with us after a short break. We're going to talk women's hockey with head coach Candace Moxley. Welcome back. In our first segment today, we're talking women's hockey with head coach Candace Moxley and senior forward from Buffalo, Nikki Kirchberger. Ladies, first, just looking back at the season, 18-8-0 overall, school record by seven wins. I mean, shattered a school record. Highest finish ever in ECAC West play. Uh, hosted a playoff game for the first time in school history. And this, just in your third year, two years after a three-win season, um, Talk about, kind of rewind to the expectations to the season and, and then what the team was able to accomplish. Um, okay, well, I think last year uh, and how we performed last year with a, with a young team, we had a very large freshman class uh, making playoffs and, and being in the mix and knowing that we're close. Um, I think the, losing that, fr that playoff game against Utica last season left a bad taste in our mouth. And with this class, this large freshman class moving forward and, and with a lot of the senior leadership we had in our locker room, these girls wanted to make a statement. Um, so for me as a coach, it was, it was fairly easy for us to just, okay, what do you need from us? Let's make sure we're, we're all moving in the right direction and we make that statement. Um, so these girls came out uh, guns a blazing and uh, they, they did phenomenal throughout the year. Um, couldn't have asked uh, anything more uh, from them because they left it all out on the ice in that last playoff game for us. You mentioned it, it was a young group, and it, right. it is a young group, but there were three seniors on the team, and, and the most veteran of the seniors, I, I suppose, is with you. Uh, Nikki, you saw more Buffalo State women's hockey games than any player ever has, setting a school <laughs> record playing in 103 games, uh, spent time forward and defense, and still finished tied for third all-time in scoring, 31 goals, 31 assists, 62 points. Um, also second in school history with 171 penalty minutes. Congratulations. Um, first, I guess, can you believe it's over? Uh, no. I still go to the rink and I'm like, oh, okay, like, got to go work out. Got to get stronger for next year. But it's just like, it's going to be like awesome to watch now from the stands to see like how good the program's actually going to do. And it's turned around within three years with her being head coach, like it's just gonna go anywhere but up. Talk about looking back at your career, uh, making a commitment to the program. I think part of your goals coming in were to transform the program, and I think you can leave successfully feeling like you were successful in that. Uh, but talk about the growth of the program from three wins to 18 from your sophomore to senior year, and obviously you being such a key part of that. Uh, uh, there's no words to describe it, because when you come in and you're just, you win three and you make it to playoffs, you're, you kind of get like the playoff taste. And then the following year, you're like, okay, like, this is kind of awesome. We're making playoffs again. And then, like, this year when we just, we, when we were 8-0, like, she kind of helped us, like, remember, like, it's not 8-0. Like, it is just games. Like, you still need to keep playing. And it was nice because everybody was like, yeah, like, great, we are 8-0. But, like, we want to make playoffs. We want to make semis. We want to make national championships. But, I mean, we fell short. But, like, it was just, like, that drive. Now everybody has that taste. And they're like, well, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep digging until we get that national championship here. Talk about the, the process. Yeah, the other team fell short, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Although the goals at the beginning of the season, I think we exceeded most of those goals, right. if not all of them. Um, but your expectations change as, as, as success has changed. But a lot of times you hear about the process of learning how to win um, and how to advance in, in the playoffs and how to maintain those or control right. those nerves. Talk about the experience that the returning players got this year and what kind of value that will be moving forward. I, I think uh, with this past playoff game that we, we had against Oswego, that um, it, it still showed our youth, uh, where now the, that class now has two playoff games underneath their belt, where 
they know that they can't let their emotions get to them. And it is a growing process from your freshman year to your senior year. You are, you are developing as a human being as well as a hockey player. Um, so it's just uh, kind of guide the girls a little bit more and finding our balance and that even keel so that when we step into that, that playoff game uh, in the future that we're, we're ready to go, we're, we're even, um, and our emotions aren't getting the best of us. As soon as the season ends, or even before that, it, it's recruiting season, and you're always, as a coach, you're never able to stand still. You're always looking forward to next year. Have you noticed a, a bit of a change with recruiting and talking to, to prospects? People have now heard of Buffalo State women's hockey, and I, I think the perception of Buffalo State women's hockey, I would assume, has changed a bit. Have, have you found that, and is it a little bit easier to get in the door? Oh, yeah, by, by all means. Um, when, when I was first on the road, uh, talking to coaches and players like, oh we didn't know buffalo state had a team um where now it's they they know we exist um we we're making our mark we are still making our mark and and uh getting out there and speaking to um to recruits to coaches to parents uh, and showing them what we do here at buffalo state how we operate what we have to offer and a lot of the times uh, after we have recruits on campus and parents on campus, they leave and they're like, wow, like that was a great visit. And we hear a lot of positive feedback coming that way where it's, we agree with you. <laughs> we do have a fantastic product here. And, uh, and, and it's our goals as coaches to, to help you through those, those four years that you commit to us. And um, if you come in as a freshman and you leave as a senior, the same person then, and the same hockey player, then we're not doing our jobs. So, and we take it pretty personally that when, when players come into our program that we're developing uh, the entire student athlete and that they're getting a great experience when they're here at Buffalo State. You talk about maturing as, mm -hmm. as a person as well and uh, we, we love our four-year seniors that, that stick through <laughs> and contribute as much to the hockey side of things as you did. Um, but graduating one more semester to go, uh, graduating with a degree in criminal justice, what, what's, on, what's on the horizon for Nikki? Um, Either to become a Buffalo firefighter or potentially Customs and Border Patrol agent. And Coach will continue to support you through <laughs> any, any future endeavors. Uh, congratulations on an outstanding career. We'll, we'll honor you properly at, at the banquet at the end of the year. And Mox, get back out there recruiting. I know you've got a, a trip out west coming up soon. Yeah. So, so good luck in the off season. That'll do it for our first segment. But when we come back, we're going to talk track and field with head coach Eugene Lewis. I wanted to point out our Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week. This week it's from the track and field program Benjamin Aziki, a sociology major. He won the NCAA Division III championship in the triple jump on Saturday, posting a winning mark of 15.07 meters on his very first attempt, which was a new personal record. His national title is the ninth in school history for men's track and field. Benjamin Aziki is your Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week. And in our second segment, we are joined by the national champion himself, Benjamin Aziki, along with head coach Eugene Lewis. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, triple jump national champion. Um, let's back up first, a, a product of Susan Wagner High School in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your long road to coming to Buffalo State. Out of high school, where did you start off? Um, out of high school, uh, I was getting recruited by like, a couple of schools, a couple of big schools. But uh, ended up at uh, Rhode Island, so cause my mom, my mom loved it, loved Rhode Island from the uh, start of it. So I mean, she just wanted me to go there, and it was a full scholarship. So I mean, she really couldn't argue with her. So then, um, and I had family there also, and then I, I went there for like three years. It was fun. I mean, it was good, but uh, I left on there, and then I was looking for a school to come to. I didn't know where to go, and my friend came here. My friend was talking about football. He's like, why not come here and play football, and. And I was like, well, okay. They had my major. I want to do. I want to do sociology. Also, with a, I just want to do also criminal justice too. So then I came here, and then big part, Rich Pete. Uh, he's a he's an older guy. He just kept um, talking to me about like joining uh, joining track, and I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, that, and third, and just kept doing that. And then um, I actually came, I actually talked to him because I kept hearing about how Coach Lewis was just so cool and how everybody just loves Coach Lewis. So I was like, you know, well, maybe I should just give it a try. 
And then once I came, like, I fell in love with the program. It was just, it was just great. Every, it just felt comfortable here. Like, I feel like this is where I was supposed to be. And I just thank the coaches for just helping me out and giving me my confidence. All the coaches, Coach Allen, every coach, Coach Shadow, Coach Lewis, of course. Um, they just helped me. They helped that, the bridge between two different schools and coming and not being awkward and being weird. But So three years at Rhode Island, uh, three years on the indoor track and field team, luckily for us, only two years of, of outdoor. So you yeah. still have another year after this of, of outdoor eligibility. Um, Kane Buffalo State, or transitioning from running back to receiver with, mm -hmm. the, with the football program. Um, and it's funny when you were added to the team, you were added a little bit late and uh, Coach Allen is the one kind of <laughs> charged with maintaining the roster yeah. when he came in. I remember him coming in, I promise this is the last one we're adding. And then a couple days later, Jeff, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've got this kid, we have to get him on the team. Um, talk about the process of, of having him join the team late and what your expectations were. A, a former Atlantic 10 long jump champion, so obviously you knew you had had a commodity there. Well, we, we've we actually was aware of Ben even coming out of high school. And, you know, the big caveat there was, you know, football. And so he, he was definitely a Division One football talent um, and took that opportunity. Um, my expectations is one, we knew we had a very good athlete to work with. And from what I had heard about him as a young man, I felt like um, he would be very coachable and someone that we could actually have some success with. Um, I commend Ben on, he came um, kind of late to the indoor season to be quite frank. Um, and we had to cautiously kind of progress through the season one because we had to get him in track and field shape. But more importantly, it was just to get him more acclimated to actually doing track and field events because it had been some time, you know, in between. And um, he did well at that, and, and obviously his talent showed up when it needed to. Let's talk about the national championship meet. Um, I'm not sure what your expectations were. I, I know where you were seated, and I yeah. thought, he's got a good shot at being an All-American. Yeah. I remember uh, on Saturday in my family room pulling up the results, and I didn't have to <laughs> scroll very far to see your name. So it, it took me by surprise, and I think it took you by surprise. Yeah. The very first jump, a personal record, 15.07 meters. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't jump again. <laughs> um, did, did you know it was enough? Did, did you surprise yourself when you when you saw the mark? Take us through the competition. Yeah, um, I don't like. I still, I just still can't believe it because it was crazy. Like it just happened. Like the perfect, the most perfect time it could happen was at national championship. And then the first jump, I knew, like, from the whole, the whole time I was warming up, the whole time, like, Coach just kept me telling me, you got this, you got this, just believe in yourself. And, I mean, like, I believed in myself because I got there, I mean, of course, but, like, I just didn't think that I was going to win. Like, I didn't really sit down and think about really winning. Like, I told everybody I was going to win because you can't tell them, like, you're going to lose. <laughs> but, I mean, I really didn't think it was going to happen, and then it happened, and it was just crazy. So, I mean, once, once I put that big mark out there, coach is just like, relax, let's see, let's see where it goes from there. If anybody comes close, then you keep jumping. So, that's pretty much what happened. Now, how nerve-wracking is that? To, you're the leader in the clubhouse, <laughs> but to watch countless jumps after yours. Uh, are you watching closely or oh, are you not course. watching them? Of course, because I think uh, after, after we got done with the first flight, they took us back to the gym and let us wait down and uh, let the other flight go in front of us. Um, and that's, those who had the big dogs in, they had the kid that was number one going in, the number two kid, they had a lot of big dogs. They had the Cortland kid that beat me last week. Um, so it was just like, they had, a, they had a, the couple big dogs. So I was expecting like someone to pop a 15, of course, and I'll come back maybe second, third, hopefully get All-American. So then when I came back, they were on their third jump, and it was a kid, um, Steve, West, Wisconsin Stevenson, I don't really remember the school name, but he came out there and popped a 15-3 on his last jump. I was like, okay. So now it's going to get crazy, and uh, it's going to get crazy in the finals. So everybody, that's what I was expecting. But then that's all he had, and <laughs> it just felt great watching, watching it just come down to me being the last jump, and I can just pass it. Coach, just a, a few seconds left, but mm -hmm. um, the, the ninth men's champion, 13th overall, and what we have seven in the past six years. Uh, talk about what that means to the program achieving on that level. We've had a number of All-Americans, countless now, but the national champions mean something a little bit more special. Well, one of the things that we pride ourselves with is, is the program has grown over the years in, total, to, in terms of total uh, team members or whatnot. Um, but we're not a very big team, so we really shoot for quality. We've gotten quality kids here, and they've done an extremely well job of performing at a high level. It's exciting to watch, and, and Congratulations and thank you for thank representing you. Our, our, our program and school so well. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we're going to continue to talk track and field. Coach Lewis will bring Jaslyn Porter, also an All-American.
welcome to Bengal Update. I'm Rebecca Coleman here with the recap of news and a look at the upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. Track and field closed the 2015-16 indoor season on a high note. On the men's side, senior Benjamin Iziki earned Buffalo State's ninth national championship in men's track and field when he won the title in the triple jump over the weekend at the NCAA Division III Indoor Track and Field Championships hosted by Grinnell College. Iziki posted the winning mark on his first attempt, measuring 15.07 meters. This is the second time a Bengal has won the triple jump with the previous title coming at the 1982 outdoor meet by James Parker. Teammate Corey Cox earned All-America honors for the third time in his career in the long jump after placing sixth in the long jump with a mark of 7.02 meters. For the women, Jaslyn Porter captured the sixth All-America certificate of her career, placing sixth in the 400 meter dash with a time of 57.44 seconds. Buffalo State will open the 2016 outdoor season on Saturday, April 2nd at the University of Rochester. Softball opened the 2016 season at the Virginia Wesleyan Beach Blast. The Bengals dropped both games on day one with a 6-1 loss to Roanoke and a 13-0 loss to number seven Virginia Wesleyan. Buffalo State quickly bounced back the next day and earned a 5-2 win over Frostburg and a 7-1 win over Baruch. Sophomore Laura Crooks and senior Sarah Gorski are leading the Bengals offense with a 364 batting average. Buffalo State travels to Claremont, Florida for a 12-game set beginning on Sunday, March 20th against Salve Regina and Western Connecticut. Live stats and live video will be available for all 12 games, and links can be found on the Buffalo State Athletics page at www.buffalostateathletics.com. Women's lacrosse is currently 2-3 overall. The Bengals are coming off a 17-15 win at Allegheny. In the victory, Christina Kroll scored a career-high six goals and Alana Hearn tallied nine points. Currently, the Bengals lead the conference in saves per game with 11, and starting goalkeeper Elise Stark is ranked first with 10.4 saves per game. Buffalo State is also ranked second in the SUNYAC for cause turnovers per game, averaging nine. The Bengals open their home schedule against RIT on Thursday at 4 p.m. on Coyer Field. Men's swimmer Connor Mergler will attempt to become Buffalo State's first swimming All-American in 40 years when he competes at the NCAA Division III Swimming and Diving Championships in Greensboro, North Carolina from March 16th through the 19th. Mergler will compete in the 50, 100, and 200 free events after posting qualifying times and setting school records while capturing SUNYAC championship titles in all three events last month. He was also named SUNYAC Male Outstanding Swimmer of the Meet for his accomplishments. The sophomore business major enters the 50 free ranked 7th, the 100 free ranked 8th, and the 200 free ranked 11th. The top eight finishers in each event will earn All-America honors. Following the conclusion of the championships, Mergler will compete in a long course time trial on Sunday, March 20th, in both the 50 and 100 free, to attempt to qualify for the Olympic trials in Omaha, Nebraska on June 26th through July 3rd. Reporting for Buffalo State Athletics, I'm Rebecca Coleman. Now back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Becky, for the update. In our final segment, Coach Lewis is sticking around, and this time he's joined by Jaslyn Porter, a senior from Niagara Falls, sprinter and jumper, and six-time All-American. Um, we'll talk to Jazz in a second. Coach, talk, talk about what she's brought to the program. Six-time All-American, three athletes tied for second with two other athletes. Only four athletes have ever received that many accolades in their career, and she's not done yet. Uh, still a decent chance at, at three more in the outdoor season. Absolutely. Um, Talk about, about Jazz's career so far a little bit. Well, I mean, Jazlyn is, is uh, an individual that we're proud to have an opportunity to coach um, because of she possessed so much talent coming out of high school. And she was a little bit untapped from the standpoint of she hasn't done track for extremely a long amount of time. So um, her enthusiasm to the college training didn't go as well as she originally anticipated. Um, but being the good person that she is, um, she was very persever perseverant, worked hard, and kind of found herself being one of the top athletes in the country in several events. In researching, and I've, I've, I've followed your career, I've been here all four years, but looking back, I remember you as a freshman and modest success. You were a strong athlete, but not on the national level yet. So these six All-America certificates have come in just two and a half years now, yeah. and that speaks, I think, to raw coming in. Um, 
sixth place in the 400 meter dash this past weekend, a two time All American in the long jump, two time in the 400, and two time in the 4x4. Four four. Um, what does it mean, first of all, to, I mentioned to you yesterday, uh, Latoya Edwards and Erica Johnson each have six as well, and then Jasmine Dunham is the only one that surpassed that across all of our sports, men's and women's. Um, it's pretty elite company. What, what does that mean to you, if anything? Well, I didn't know that until yesterday. Um, and if you ask anyone coming out of high school, I would never thought I would be this successful in track and field. I could never have imagined this. So even to hear things like that, it still seems so surreal to me because I wouldn't have thought like, oh, I would be going to nationals or even coming in second or six or six or even being all American for that point. Like, I guess I just never considered myself that great of an athlete. So it's still a surprise to me to hear things like that. And, and not just one trick, it's it's the long jump and the 400. Yeah. And you competed in both this past weekend, a national qualifier in the long jump again, placing 14th. Talk about training for two very different events and, and not just training for them, but competing at the national level in the same weekend. How does that affect your mindset? You can't just focus on one event like a lot of the, the gifted athletes get to do. Um, is that a distraction? Does it help you? How does that factor in your training? Um. I guess it's not so bad. I mean, I've been used to doing a lot of different things, I guess, long jump and running. But at nationals, it can be difficult because you have to make sure you focus on that one event. Whatever event is first, you need to put all your focus in on that. Then once it's done, you can focus on the next thing. But sometimes it is hard, especially if you might not do so good in the first event. Now you're kind of stressed and worried about how you're going to perform in the second. So I think you just have to be strong-minded and really focus on your events and just I don't know, you just have to be strong minded and really focus yourself. I mentioned six time All American, but between the long jump, the 400, and the 4x4 four four in the outdoor, is, is there a goal? Is, is, is it, I want three more, or just do you take it one event at a time and perform as well as you can? How do you set your goals for, for your, your um, final season of college competition? Well, now that you told me I'm, I'm <laughs> tied for second, I gotta break it. You need it to get now. at least one, right? Yeah, <laughs> at least one. I need to break it. But I think there's someone else. I don't know if it might be Corey or someone that's close. So I feel like, okay, I need to get at least two more to make sure that I beat them just so I can stay ahead in second place. But I want to just try and get as many as possible if I can get all three, two, one. Like, I'm just trying to max out. It's my last semester, my last season, so I'm just trying to get as many as possible. Coach, how do you manage an athlete heading into their, their last season, and, and how do you set expectations that are realistic for her? Well, a lot of the times, you know, with, with our kids, they, they have a pretty good track and field IQ. So as they progress through the years, each year we set a, a standard and um, with Jaslyn, she's been able to, to achieve those goals. And I just think it's been a tremendous job between, you know, myself, Coach Allen, and even her teammates in terms of the coordination of how everybody works together and how the training um, prepares her for both events. Um, you know, from our perspective, all she has to do is just go out and perform. She's talented enough. And um, as you can see, she's a winner. And, and I, I know you do a really good job of, of protecting your athletes too. Health is part of that and, and mm -hmm. putting them in a position to, to be feeling healthy at the right time of year. How does that go into your scheduling for the team and scheduling for, for individuals? Well, you know, one of the things that we try to do with the kids that we know have the talent to perform at the national level is, is we try not to overcompete them. Um, you know, they have the skills, the techniques to do well. So what we try to do is put them in the situation of performing high quality versus quantity of opportunities. Um, so throughout a particular season, some of our elite kids will not compete as early in the season just to kind of give them a, an opportunity, one, to continue to train, and more importantly, you know, to balance the, the school aspect of things. Um, and, and then when we have about three or four weeks to go, um, into championships or so, that's when these kids um, really start to blossom because they're getting their opportunities to compete and they're healthy. We've got a minute left or so. Uh, do want to focus a little bit off the track as well. An excellent student, 3.59 GPA and graduating this spring. Communication major, um, but a pretty exciting opportunity on the horizon in September. Tell our viewers what you have next after graduation. Well, I just applied for the Disney College program. It's kind of like an internship. So I'll be going there in September and working for about four months. And then hopefully after that, I can apply to more professional internships like the NCAA or even for ESPN or ABC Family. Because eventually I want to work in like the entertainment industry or even sports. So hopefully I can 
uh, get into that field. Thank you for coming on. Best of luck in the outdoor season. That'll do it for this edition of Bengal Magazine. Thank you as always to our great crew down here in Instructional Resources. And thanks to you for watching. We'll see you again in two weeks for more Bengal Magazine. <music>